What's in a game? When it's the latest blockbuster Uncharted title, well, that's one doozy of a question. With an epic game comes an epic development process. And, well, everyone wants sequels to go bigger and better. We visited Naughty Dog just as the game was being finished, meeting with lead effects artist Keith Garrett, who gave us the broad strokes of, well, how'd they do that? So strap in, pop that drama mean pill, and join us for a rollicking ride through the adventure behind the adventure in Uncharted 3 Drake's Deception. <laughs> Perfect. How much goes into creating these massive levels? What's the step-by-step -step process? It kind of all starts with the concept, right? We need to figure out uh, two aspects. There's the story, really. We need to figure out what is the reason for Drake to go into these environments and how do we actually portray that through the environment. But also there's the artistic aspect of what is the mood uh, of this environment. The legend crops up over and over. Ubar, Aram of the Pillars. So once we kind of have those two aspects locked down, we actually start flooding out the levels and try to implement gameplay throughout all of it. Then we sit down and we start working on the actual, uh, the real 3D art. The environment artists get it and they start filling out the details. So we start paying attention to the atmosphere and what, what sort of life and ambience do we want to put into these environments to try to make them feel a little bit more real. This, I did. I know a lot of it takes place in a desert. That must be pretty hard to, to create. Yeah, definitely. The desert's been an interesting one for us, uh, mostly because we're faced with the challenge of how do we actually present a hot, dry desert where there's not really anything moving. There's no real life out there. And so what we've come up with is really most of the motion happens from Drake and from the interactions with Drake. Uh, and so it's been our, our big challenge this game to sort of embed Drake more into the actual flow of the dunes and the sands and actually try to animate Drake as if he were struggling to, to crawl up the, the sand dunes. Now to learn how to do that, did you have to send members of your team out into a deserty environment yeah, to kind totally. of get a feel for it? Yeah, there's uh, these amazing dunes called the Imperial Dunes just outside of Yuma. So we went out there, we went out to the Imperial Dunes with cameras and uh, video recorders and just tons of different uh, toys to play with out in the sand basically. And just spent the entire day running around up and down dunes and driving around through, uh, through this massive desert to try to find different set pieces and different points of reference that we could actually try to use to inspire us. So once you have that content, once you have that point of reference, how do you then translate it into technology within the game? Oh, that's the challenging part. Uh, and it really came down to individual thoughts. Like we look at the dunes and say, oh man, it's awesome how the sand is actually gusting off the crest of that dune. How can we actually do that? Uh, and then since that one's a, a particle effect for me, I had to sit down and figure out to how to get a nice swirl rolling off of the edge of the dune. There was also things like, well, when he steps, uh, the hole that's left from his foot actually starts to fill in. I mean, it, it looks like liquid. So seeing those individual things and identifying how do we actually get Drake to leave footprints that are based off of the slope of the surface that blend in with the, uh, the actual textures and the lighting of the sand dunes that the environment guys and the lighters have worked so hard to create. You have to make like the sand climbing algorithm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's been a challenge. Is there a moment where you're like, I just can't deal with sand anymore. I have to I have to move on. If I look at one more grain of sand, I'm gonna stab my pen through my eye. Water's actually been that way for Water. us. Yeah, yeah. So what exactly went into that cruise ship scene? I mean, it's obviously a very pivotal moment within the game. How, how, what kind of elements did you have to put in there? Well, it all began with the ocean, actually. I mean, we knew that we wanted to to show the approach to the cruise ship, and we wanted to see the, the cruise ship actually floating on, on water. The technology needed for a big stormy ocean that's, you know, massive waves that are dynamically driving a boat is completely different than the technology that we need for uh, water gushing down a hallway. One of the very first challenges we came up with was how, how do we actually build this thing? Like, how do I artistically control this water rushing down a hallway and like bending around the corner, splashing? It's actually a piece of geometry that we have rigged with thousands of joints actually forming, like rising up and down and rushing forward at you. This stormy ocean was a completely different approach because that is entirely dynamically driven uh, and it's actually driving the motion of the boat. So the boat is actually attached to the ocean and then through uh, essentially physics, uh, we're moving the boat along with the waves. The, the ability to have Drake stand on something that's moving is such a freeing thing to a game developer. We actually realized that we could, because of the, the technology where you can make Drake stand on a moving platform, we can actually attach the moving platform to the ocean. Uh, and so right now the ocean is actually driving the motion of the cruise ship. No, 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 let's, let's talk about this! The moving set pieces sound like so much fun. Are there any other ones that are very prominent in the game? Yeah, one of the other cool ones that we came up with pretty early on, we, we thought, oh, it'd be awesome if Drake could be in a deployment practice. 
for a while we were debating uh, doing like zero G sequences and stuff like that. <laughs> the mocap actors would love that. Yeah, yeah, sure. seriously. <laughs> we ended up doing a lot of really cool stuff with the plane dynamic, almost dynamically tearing apart around you uh, as it's crashing and basically as you're falling and, and trying to convey that general sense of emotion. The water is uh, a, a little bit different than falling out of an airplane, so how are those different to create? We've had to actually go through and find ways to blend into animations that Drake might actually do when he's falling, uh, but also all the AI, all the cloth, all the physics objects, and even the particles need to imply that you're moving at the speed of gravity uh, or, or that uh, you're being pressed down by, by the weight of the force of the Gs. Even the slight tilting and banking, we've done a lot of fun things where like if you're inside a cargo plane, you lose scope of the horizon, so you can't really tell the plane's rotating. So we did a lot with the beam of light shining in through the windows, mm -hmm. uh, so that as the plane actually rotates, you see that beam of light moving, and then all of a sudden the boxes inside are starting to slide around, and uh, really kind of trying to find a way to sell the motion, even though you don't have a perspective on the horizon. As for the people, what kind of changes have you made to the character mapping or, or the way that you create their, the look and feel of the characters in the game? We've definitely added more dynamic uh, attributes to the characters. Drake's hair is finally getting wet. The other big area that we've been pushing is wrinkle maps and actually providing more of the actual points of expression within the, the faces of the characters as they're animating. Drake's been through a lot. It's about time it starts showing he on has, his face. Yeah. I mean, he's a good looking guy, but he's, <laughs> he's, you know, I don't know if he's using an SPF 50. He really yeah. needs to bump it up a few levels if he's going to be out in the sun that much. <laughs> From the looks of it, Naughty Dog's earning its place in the sun, right alongside its hero. With amazing action spanning oceans, deserts, and skies, Uncharted 3 has us seriously wondering, where will they take Drake next? At least now, we've got a sense of how they'll pull it off in style.